So after batting a home run last year with horror games thanks to the likes of Alan Wake 2, RE4, and Dead Space Remake, it's only natural that our expectations are still pretty high for the genre going into 2024. With that in mind, it begs the question, can 2024 produce more incredible horror games that can compete with last year's performance? Well, I think it can. As a matter of fact, it might even surpass last year if at least half of these games on this list releases before the year is over. And while some of these games may not have release dates yet, and there is a good chance a few of them will get pushed back into 2025, on today's episode we're going to talk about the top 20 horror games that could potentially release this year. Before that though, if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoyed today's topic, hit that like button as well. Finally, if you want to help support Nerdspace Games directly, you can now become a STARS member by heading over to the channel's homepage and clicking that join button. Anyway, my name is Ruben with Nerdspace Games, and this is my top 20 most anticipated horror games coming in 2024. Maybe. Let's get it. Number 20, Dark Fracture. Why am I doing all these things, you ask? Why are you in my head? I just want to live my life. It was just a job, nothing more. Just a job. Dark Fracture throws the player into the shoes of a body farm employee named Edward. The game takes place in the 90s within an isolated forest somewhere in the US. Edward is a troubled man with a complicated past and one night while working a midnight shift he's pulled into a nightmarish world. What really has me interested in Dark Fracture is the world that is built here and the psychological horror aspect of the game. With the demo and trailers, you can see the world is truly horrifying, taking inspiration from video games like Scorn to build up a truly terrifying environment. From body horror to memorable set designs to terrifying stalker-like enemies roaming the halls of this nightmare-like world, this game seems to be something that'll keep you up at night after playing it. Currently, there is a demo of Dark Fracture on Steam, and this game is set to release on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and of course PC sometime later this year. Number 19, Paranormal Tales. <sighs> This is one game that I was pretty excited about when it was first announced and planned to release back in October of last year. Unfortunately, as you can see here, that didn't happen. Thankfully, there is a solid chance that this game will still be released just later this year. Probably in October, just in time for the Halloween season. Paranormal Tales is a body cam horror game that puts you in the shoes of different characters in terrifying situations. If you're looking for a game that's all about terrifying the living hell out of you, then this is probably going to be the game for you. With the developers promising some of the scariest scenarios, I feel like this game might end up being one of the scariest games of 2024. Do you think you have what it takes to play through the entire game? Well, find out later this year when it releases on Steam. Good luck, nerds! Number 18, Vampire The Masquerade Bloodlines 2 Can you hear it? My blood is singing. I will wait for you. So full disclosure, I've never played any of these games. I hear great things about them, especially Bloodlines 1, I just never got around to playing them. But with everything I'm seeing about Bloodlines 2, I'm ready to give it a shot finally. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2? Wow, that's a long name. Anyway, it takes place in Seattle as you play as an elder vampire. Align yourself with other vampires, fight back against them, use your seduction abilities to feed on the city, and use your supernatural abilities to take down your enemies. Yeah, this game looks like it has a lot and I'm really excited for it. Not gonna lie, I've never been more excited to be a vampire before. The only concerns I have about this game relate to the fact that this game apparently has been through development hell and I'm not too fond of the Chinese room. Still, I'm ready to give this one a shot and if it can at least succeed on half the things it's promising then it should be an overall fun vampire horror game. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 releases this fall on PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. Number 17 Killer Clowns from Outer Space The Game Killer Clowns? Like, from outer space? If you asked me if I was excited about this game when it was first announced, then I would tell you, hell no. However, my appreciation for asymmetrical games has gone up a lot thanks to the likes of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and recent updates to Dead by Daylight. For that reason, I'm more excited about this game than I originally was. 
Similar to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there will be two teams with the killer clowns having three members set on hunting down the survivors. The really surprising part about this game though is that the survivors will be set at seven members, making it one of the bigger asymmetrical horror games as most are usually set at four survivors. While I am a little concerned about the matchmaking and the longevity of the game due to the amount of players it takes to make up a full party, I'm still excited to give this one a shot, especially after seeing all the fun and goofy abilities that the clowns have at their disposal. As of now, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is set to release on every single console except for the Switch later this year. Number 16, Revel. Revel puts you into the shoes of Walter Thompson as he explores the Nelson Bros Circus. What really has me intrigued by this game comes down to two things, the set design and the puzzles. From what I've seen so far in this game, it seems like it's going to focus more on storytelling and puzzle solving versus combat, which is totally fine. I've always said a good survival horror experience starts with the puzzle solving within a terrifying environment and Revel checks that box. Obviously, this game seems to be more of a psychological thriller versus a survival horror, but as long as this game can knock it out of the park when it comes to the atmospheric horror, then I'm all in. While it probably won't be one of the scariest games of the year, I can easily see this game being a lot of fun just from the mysteries, the puzzles, and the storytelling all set within a pretty spooky circus. Even though Steam doesn't have an official release date for this game yet, the publishers announced on their Facebook page that this game will be releasing sometime in 2024 on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number 15, The Casting of Frank Stone. Whatever is down there is too dangerous. Ever since the success that Supermassive has had with Until Dawn, The Quarry, and the Dark Pictures Anthology games, other developers have been trying to work with Supermassive in developing a narrative-driven experience using their IP. For example, apparently, before Konami went to Annapurna, they were actually considering Supermassive to lead their episodic series. And even though that fell through, it looks like Supermassive still landed a partnership with Behavior and their IP Dead by Daylight. The casting of Frank Stone looks to focus on a welder with a sinister motive as he attempts to kill four survivors. Just like most Supermassive games, this will be a single player experience and a point and click exploration game and more than likely it'll have branching storylines depending on the choices within the game. Outside of that, we don't know much about this, but apparently this game is set to release in 2024. What's even more surprising is that insiders seem to think that this game could be released within the first half of the year, and I wouldn't put it past behavior to add both the survivors and Frank Stone as playable characters in Dead by Daylight not long after the release of this game. But you can pick up the casting of Frank Stone on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and Steam. Number 14, Death Ground. So there are actually a few dinosaur games that are set to release this year. The Lost Wild and Jurassic Park are both predicted to release sometime in 2024. However, with Lost Wild seemingly focusing more on survival and Jurassic Park focusing more on the narrative, it seems like Death Ground may be the only one of these three that could be a really good horror dinosaur game. I feel like the video game market is wide open for a good, scary dinosaur game. And since we have no idea when Dino Crisis Remake will come out, our best chance is at one of these other studios delivering us a truly terrifying dinosaur game. In the case of Death Ground, it seems to have a lot of alien isolation meets phasmophobia as you'll need to work as a team while tracking the locations of different dinosaurs. You're not really given too many weapons or resources, which means your main way of dealing with these dinosaurs is stealth. The trailer showcases some tense moments of hiding from velociraptors to being taken by surprise from behind by them. And if you're one of those people that believes that horror games are not scary unless you play alone, well then you're in luck. Death Ground allows you to play by yourself or with the team. So if you really want to test out your skills or just want to embrace the horror head on alone, then that's available to you as well. While I don't think it will come close to satisfying those of us that are looking for a new Dino Crisis game, it should at least provide a good time with friends and remind us that dinosaurs are fucking scary. Death Ground releases sometime in 2024 on Steam. 
Number 13, Hollow Body. Hollow Body is an indie horror game that is inspired by classic survival horror games like Silent Hill and Resident Evil. Speaking of Silent Hill, this game primarily takes place in a small abandoned town. If you're a fan of survival horror games with tank controls and fixed camera angles, then this game will suit you just fine. You play as Mika, a shipper in a distant future working on the black market and while on a delivery she crash lands into an abandoned ghost town. After exploring you'll come across deformed monsters, challenging puzzles, and limited resources that require you to manage your inventory carefully just like those old school games that we grew up with. I'm really excited for this game as I've been really wanting to play a game that had that old school Silent Hill vibe and with the direction Konami has been heading with the franchise, this will probably be the closest I can get to it. With what seems to be a really interesting story, a creepy yet satisfying world, and some terrifying monster designs, this game looks to be exactly what the doctor ordered for fans of classic survival horror. Number 12, Bye Sweet Carol. Bye Sweet Carol is a unique looking game as the animation will feel different compared to any other horror game releasing in 2024. Described as a narrative horror thriller inspired by the greatest animated movies of all time, you play as Lana, an orphan who is investigating her friend who has gone missing. If you couldn't tell by the name of the game, the missing person is of course, Carol. Upon doing so, she's brought into a fantastical world with dark and sinister, um, well, sinister bunnies. Listen, I know what this game sounds like, but before you judge this game, please check out the gameplay. You'll see that there's more than meets the eye with this game. Overall, the story, the animation, and the fact that this is the same guy that brought us Remothered, this game easily has won me over and I can't wait to check it out later this year. By Sweet Carol will be releasing on all platforms by the way, so you can actually enjoy this on your own Nintendo Switch if you wanted to. Number 11, Still Wakes the Deep. <laughs> I know what I said earlier about the Chinese room and I stand by that. They have yet to prove to me that they can actually show us a truly outstanding horror game. I feel like both Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, and Everybody's Gone to the Rapture were mediocre at best. With that being said, this one looks like it has a lot of potential. We haven't seen a lot of this game yet, but from the little bit that I have seen and the concept, I feel like this game could be a home run for them. You play as a worker on an oil rig out in the middle of the ocean. With the relentless storm and water filling the rig, you pretty much already have enough to keep you scared. But there is another problem. Apparently something dark and terrifying has snuck into the oil rig and it's up to you to rescue any survivors and escape from what lurks deep inside this facility. Still Wakes the Deep is a first person horror game that uses the environment, sound design, and the unknown to keep the players guessing and fearing for their lives as they explore the oil rig for a way out. Still Wakes the Deep will release early this year on all next-gen consoles, but most importantly, you can play this game on Xbox Game Pass. God, I love that service. Number 10, Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Stalker 2 is a first-person horror game set in the open world of Chernobyl. Described as a non-linear survival horror game, you must explore the radioactive area of Chernobyl, use resources to help you survive, battle through horrifying deformed monsters, manage survival mechanics like hunger and radiation, and make decisions that can change the outcome of the entire game. Stalker 2 looks to be extremely ambitious as it combines survival horror elements with FPS gameplay and an open world with branching storylines. Like I'm kind of picturing this game as a Fallout game but scarier. The best part about this game is that it's going to be available on day one for Game Pass, both PC and Xbox. 
So there shouldn't be a single reason for you at least not to give it a chance when it releases sometime in quarter one of 2024. Number nine, Slitherhead. Ever since Slitherhead was announced at the 2021 Game Awards, fans have been excited to see this game release. After all, Slitherhead will be the first game that the new development team, Bokeh Game Studio, will release. The reason why this game has such high expectations is because the head of this team was the creator of the original Silent Hill. So obviously, this guy knows what he's doing when it comes to psychological horror. Unfortunately though, we don't know a lot about this game and up until recently, updates on Slitherhead have been pretty scarce. The only official trailer we got was the one that we saw back in 2021 and then we also got some alpha footage dropped last July but that's about it guys. What we do know so far is that this game is supposed to be a survival horror game set in a town that has been infested with parasites that can mimic people. As you've already probably noticed in the trailer, these parasites can turn into some truly terrifying creatures which falls right in line with what the team behind Silent Hill is known for. This game was initially intended to release last year but obviously that wasn't the case. Still, Toyama, the creator of Slitherhead, promises that 2024 will see a lot of updates from Slitherhead with a possibility that it can still release sometime at the end of the year of 2024. Slitherhead is set to release on as many platforms as possible, so one would assume that we'll at least see it on PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. Number 8, Little Nightmares 3. One of the biggest surprises at Gamescom last year was the announcement of Little Nightmares 3. This horror franchise has recently become a big favorite for fans of the genre as it explores some really dark and terrifying designs. The game allows you to play with a friend on co-op as you explore Nowhere, a world full of delusions and dark threats around every corner. The gameplay focuses on dark and disturbing enemies, puzzle solving while in difficult situations, and teamwork as the two of you are looking to escape the dark world together. The Little Nightmares franchise is most known for its art design and the unique take it has on the horror genre. This isn't a game where you can just go guns blazing against your enemies as a majority of the experience in the Little Nightmare games put you in a position of being defenseless. Overall, if you're looking for a horror game that has lots of scares, dark storytelling, and puzzle solving that you could also enjoy with a friend, then Little Nightmares 3 should be one of your must play games of 2024. Number 7, Corpse Party 2, Darkness, Distortion. So I want to start off by saying that the clips that you are watching right now are from the 2021 version of Corpse Party 1. That's because there's not a single bit of gameplay or trailers on Corpse Party 2 yet. Before I dive into that though, allow me to do a quick recap of what is Corpse Party because some of you might have no idea what I'm talking about. The original game was set inside a dark haunted school where ghosts roam around killing characters. Throughout the game, you as the player will need to make key choices that would influence who lives and who dies. It's a pretty simple premise, but actually it became a cult classic. The game was praised for its gore, dark storytelling, and one of the best indie horror games of its time. Then, because of the success of that original game, we saw tons of different spin-offs, and technically we already got a Corpse Party 2 in the form of Dead Patient. But the game was never finished and now it seems like the same team behind the original game is back and they are releasing the true sequel to the original game. Outside of that, we don't really know much about this sequel other than the fact that the creator pretty much just dropped an image of a doll with a knife through her chest, but he did announce that we're getting Corpse Party 2 Darkness Distortion in 2024 and it will be in a completely new setting. Corpse Party is easily one of my guilty pleasures as there wasn't much gameplay at all to that game but still was a lot of fun to play and I love the dark storytelling involved in that game. Number 6, Post Trauma. Another horror game that takes inspiration from Silent Hill and other classic survival horror games, Post Trauma follows Roman, a trained conductor who somehow finds his way into some sort of twisted reality. The gameplay includes puzzles, demonic creatures, and fixed camera angles. 
as Roman, you're trying to find a way out of this nightmare as he wants to get back to his family while also facing his tormented past. There is a demo available on Steam that gives you a small taste of what to expect with this game. The puzzles in this demo are pretty creative and are actually more difficult than puzzles in your traditional survival horror games, and the visuals are stunning as you slowly move deeper and deeper into this terrifying world. Outside of what I just mentioned, we haven't seen too much more on this game, but from what I've seen with the demo, it definitely makes a strong case for being one of my most anticipated horror games of 2024, since it kind of fits that narrative of a classic survival horror game, which you guys know I love those type of games. Post Trauma will release on Steam in spring of 2024. Number 5. Paris Truth That bracelet you're wearing contains the dose of the Kika virus, which will be injected into your bloodstream when time runs out. Your body will live on, but you won't. You may or may not have noticed by now, but there are a lot of indie horror games on this list, and spoiler, there are a few more coming up. With that being said, I feel like Paris Truth is one of the lesser known games on this list, which is a damn crime because this game looks to combine two of my favorite video game franchises of all time. If you've ever wondered what a crossover between Resident Evil and Zero Escape would look like, well, here's your chance. The game follows 10 survivors who are kidnapped and put on an abandoned island and forced to battle mutants, solve puzzles, and interact with other survivors in an effort of surviving the dangers that lurk within. The gameplay is inspired by classic Resident Evil games with fixed camera angles and tank controls while also taking inspiration from Zero Escape with its visual novel storytelling. While not currently available on Steam, the game does have two demos available which I will leave the link to it in my description down below so that way you guys can go check it out. Unfortunately though, there is no official release date but I did talk to the creator of the game and he told me that the game is looking to release late 2024 or early 2025 at the latest. Hopefully it'll be released later this year because the demo is a lot of fun and I can't wait to see what a Resident Evil and Zero Escape crossover will look like. That's going to be pretty awesome, guys. Number four, Alone in the Dark. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What exactly are we gonna do when we find Jeremy? Alone in the Dark is getting a much needed remake of the original game that inspired the survival horror genre. Sure, Resident Evil was the game that put survival horror on the map, but did you know that Resident Evil was inspired by Alone in the Dark to begin with? Hell, if it wasn't for Alone in the Dark, then there is a good chance that our first Resident Evil game would have been a first person and it would have been similar to House of the Dead. Thankfully, the original Alone in the Dark game paved the way for Resident Evil and other games of the genre to come after it. So knowing all of this information, I was pretty hyped about getting a remake of that original game and hopefully I can finally get a good Alone in the Dark game. What I mean by that is that outside of the original game, I can't think of a single good game within this franchise. They've always gone the direction of action over horror, and they were all pretty rough to be honest. Still, it seems like the franchise is finally recognizing what they need to do with this IP, and this remake looks to be heading in the right direction for once. The remake seems to have everything you would want from a modern survival horror game. Over the shoulder third person perspective that matches that of Resident Evil 2. Puzzle solving, inventory management, and of course, creepy and creative monster designs. With a fantastic cast of voice actors, two playable characters that change specific scenarios depending on who you are playing as, Alone in the Dark has the opportunity to rival Alan Wake 2 in terms of being the better modern survival horror game. This game will be available on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC on March 20th, 2024. Number 3. Tormented Souls 2 
One survival horror sequel that I'm very much looking forward to is Tormented Souls 2. The original game came out in 2021, and let me tell you, there were some strong feelings from people that played that game. A lot of gamers had difficulty solving some of the puzzles within the game and found themselves stuck multiple times unless they were to use a guide. And while that might push away some people, that very aspect of Tormented Souls is why I love that game so much. The original game followed Carol Ann Walker as she explored a hospital filled with Silent Hill inspired creatures. While exploring, she'll often find herself in situations where she'll need to solve some really difficult puzzles to proceed. Personally, one of my favorites was watching a person walk around a table with a lantern from one room and then you were supposed to go into that room and repeat that process yourself. Stuff like that really challenged the players to think outside of the box, and when you add that to the classic feel that you got from the fixed camera angles and limited resources, then it's easy to see why fans of the older survival horror games really love Tormented Souls. So to see that we're finally getting a second game, only this time it's supposed to take place in a small town, really gets me hyped for what this game could bring to the table. Sure, the story wasn't the greatest, but honestly, I don't really play games like this for the story. I'm more interested in getting that nostalgic feel of playing old school survival horror games. And luckily, the developers already confirmed that this game will not be making puzzles easier and will continue to use fixed camera angles, which is music to my ears. Tormented Souls 2 is scheduled to release sometime in 2024 on PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. Number 2, Echoes of the Living. Not gonna lie, Echoes of the Living actually almost claimed a number one spot for me. That's how hyped I am about this smaller developed indie horror game. If you're a fan of the original Resident Evil 2, then I highly recommend that you go play this demo now. It's on Steam and let me tell you, you will immediately fall in love with this game if you love the original Resident Evil games. Just like the recurring theme that you've seen a lot with the indie horror games higher up on my list, Echoes of the Living takes a lot of inspiration from classic survival horror games. Most notably here is the original Resident Evil 2 game. Set in a small town in Europe, you get the opportunity to play as one or two different characters, Liam and Laura, both of which are battling through hordes of zombies and monsters in an effort to achieve different goals. With stunning locations, creative monster designs, inventory management, limited resources, and the infamous amount of backtracking, you the player will feel right at home if you played any of the classics. Oh, and the visuals are extremely impressive in my opinion. I mean, it's like if you played Resident Evil 2, but it had 4K graphics. I'm honestly really impressed with how much this team has pulled off. Obviously, your appreciation for this game will vary depending on your feelings on the classic survival horror game, so if you're not a fan of that style, then I would say you should manage your expectations. Regardless, this is hands down my most anticipated indie horror game, and it just barely misses out on the number one spot. Echoes of the Living currently doesn't have a release date, though it was initially planned to release at the end of 2023, and with that in mind, plus the fact that the game looks to be making a lot of progress and the developers already hired voice actors, I personally feel like there's a good chance we could see this game late in 2024, say around Halloween. Unfortunately, as of now, I would only expect it on Steam unless it proves to be a hit, and then maybe we'll see it make its way over to the consoles. Number 1, Silent Hill 2. Could she really be here, waiting for me? Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. Everything about this screams red flags, yet here I am putting this as my most anticipated horror game of 2024. But what can I say, I just love the Silent Hill franchise and I really, really want this game to succeed. A lot rides on the success of this game. If Silent Hill 2 Remake fails, then there's really no hope left for the franchise in Konami's hands. And even though this game still doesn't have an official release date yet, I'm confident to the point that I'm 99% sure it will be released sometime this year. Keep in mind that last May we saw Bloober Team saying that this game was technically finished and just needs polishing. Sure, since then they retracted that statement, but I feel like Konami is for sure releasing this game sometime this year and my guess is that will probably come out around March. Regardless, Silent Hill 2, the original game, is one of the best horror games of all time. Hell, some would argue that it's one of the best video games of all time. So to finally get a remake for Silent Hill 2 after 20 years is a massive deal. Imagine the world of Silent Hill with modern graphics, modern controls, and the over-the-shoulder gameplay, and with improved storytelling and dialogue. Yeah, on paper this should be a masterpiece. Unfortunately, there are a few things that concern most people, including myself. I won't dive too much into it since I have a whole video dedicated to that. I'll leave that in the description. 
but basically between Bluebird team's track record and the fact that we have seen little to no updates since its announcement has really started to concern the fans. Still, after the success of Dead Space Remake and the Resident Evil remakes, I'm going to choose to have faith until proven wrong. But please, Bluebird team, do not mess this up. Give us the same story, better visuals, and mimic the gameplay that we see in modern survival horror games like Resident Evil 2 and Alan Wake 2, and this game should be great. Anyway, Silent Hill 2 Remake is rumored to release sometime this year and will be available on PC and PlayStation 5. But that does it for this episode of Nerdspace Games. Hit up the comments and let me know which upcoming horror game are you most excited for. Also, are there any horror games out there that I missed? I'd love to add more horror games to my wishlist, so leave any suggestions in the comments down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more ranking videos like this one, especially if you love Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and other survival horror content. But thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.